Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Ulan Gang, and I'm bringing you another Civilization Overview. Continuing down the path, we are taking Lakota, a look at Lakota this time around. One of my own personal most hated civilizations in the entire game. Hated to fight against. I'm sure they're very fun to play if you are playing them. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is one of the civilizations where I was just too lazy to make a flag, so I just got the in-game flag. Uh, and called it a day. Uh, but let's get into it, starting with the unique mechanics. First one, what's a house? Lakota uh, starts off with max population at 200. They don't need to make houses at all. Uh, what's a wall? Unfortunately, as a trade-off for not having to build any houses uh, to support all a full 200 population, you also can't really build any walls as Lakota. Uh, what's a slow unit? This is in reference to the Explorer. Uh, the war chief for Lakota is a cavalry war chief that has an incredible aura that boosts the movement speed for all the units around him. It is easily one of the best uh, abilities in the, in the game for explorers to have. Uh, lol my villagers have 78 siege uh, once they get to age 3 Lakota has a dance that they can do at the community plaza that increases the siege of all of your units and when I say all of your units I mean all of your military all of your villagers, your explorer everything, uh, you can have villagers siege down like forts in seconds, it's, it's actually kind of funny uh, and lastly once they get to age 3 they can also build teepees uh, which have a stacking ability to raise the max HP of units within their radius. It's, it's a very powerful uh, ability once they, get, once they get going, but the TPs don't have very much health. Uh, so there, there is that going for them as well. Uh, the general playstyle is to rush your fast fortress, and they're going to do their best to raid and choke you out of resources on the map. Uh, for their age up system, they do run by counselors, so this means you have five different age, uh, ages to pick from total throughout the game. Uh, and with every every time you don't pick one, the bonus you get for it gets larger and larger next time. Uh, they have war chiefs. Uh, the Lakota war chief is an absolute monster on the battlefield. Uh, he has some area of effect. He's very fast. He boosts the movement speed of everybody else around him. And once you get a big button located at your community plaza, he can one shot pretty much any uh, artillery unit in the game by gaining a ten, uh, a nine times I think multiplier, maybe maybe ten times multiplier against uh, against artillery so you need to be very very careful and keep your anti-cavalry very close to the Lakota war uh, to your cavalry to uh, to make sure the Lakota war chief doesn't go around and kill all your artillery in three seconds flat now as for their unique units uh, just like with any other native civ their entire roster is all unique uh, Lakota have the best cavalry in the game just point blank period uh, they have the axe rider which is their Huss equivalence the axe rider has a very high attack but uh, also doesn't isn't like fragile as shit like the Ulan, uh, and it's also very heavily food weighted, so it, it leans re it really well into Lakota's economy, and they can mass them out quite early. Uh, the Bow Rider is an age two dragoon, uh, so it's already got that going for it, and, and just like any other goon, it also has uh, fast movement speed that is further boosted by the War Chief Explorer aura. And if that wasn't enough, the uh, Bow Rider also is the only Dragoon in the game that has zero negative multipliers against villagers, which means these guys are the absolute raiding gods. Uh, Bow Riders also have insanely high DPS and a very chunky HP bar. Um, Bow Riders are straight up just some of the best goons in the game. Uh, they're available early, they raid well, they are the fast, they, they are stupid fast, they are just very, very good. Uh, and they are overall, I think, Lakota's best unit. And uh, when you're facing a, a Lakota player, there's a 90% chance that whatever unit composition they have is going to have Bow Riders on them. They are the core of the, uh, of the, um, the, they are the core of the Lakota the unit composition. Uh, over on the second on the top is the Tashunki Prowler. This is a very interesting one. The Tashunki Prowler is a uh, unit that has very high siege attack 
but isn't the strongest fighter in the universe, but it can also go stealth. They have uh, very strict build limits with them, associated with them as well. Uh, these guys are kind of weird. They can be extremely effective if your enemy isn't paying attention, but uh, you also need to invest specific cards to get your build uh, to get your build limit for Tashinki Prowlers up. And if your ally spots that the you have the uh, the Tashinki Prowler cards in your deck, then he's going to be very careful with his explorer, and he's going to place outposts all around his. Uh, his villagers to try to defend and spot your Tashinki Prowlers while they're in stealth. So uh, you, you have to be very clever with how you use them. The Rifle Rider, on the other hand, is the weird, really weird unit. So the Rifle Rider has the tags of both heavy and light cavalry, uh, which means that it is completely countered by the Sturm Goon combo. Both Sturms and Goons have heavy multipliers against the uh, Rifle Rider. However, in exchange, the Rifle Rider has uh, multipliers against heavy infantry and a multiplier against artillery, which means this unit is a, a unit that can completely monocomp a musketeer cannon combo. If the enemy makes musk cannons, all you have to do is make uh, Rifle Riders and you win. Straight up. Uh, but if the enemy makes Skirm Goons, then your Rifle Riders are useless. So Rifle Riders are a unit that absolutely excels in fighting one army comp and will not even like play a factor in the game if the enemy does the other uh, comp. Now, uh, the up next is the Tacola Soldiers. Uh, previously known as Dog Soldiers in Legacy. The Tacola Soldiers are an Age 4 access... Uh, are avail officially trainable in Age 4, although you can uh, get Tacola Soldiers uh, through shipments beforehand, and I think as well through an Age Up politician. Uh, Tacola Soldiers are... Uh, they're like the Skull Knights for Aztec, in that they are uh, just absolute beasts of individual units with incredibly high HP, incredibly high attack. They have Splash as well. I'm pretty sure, and they're faster than Dragoons as long as the Explorer is nearby them. The Tacoa Soldiers are absolute monsters. However, I didn't circle the, uh, do the Red Square as them just because they are difficult to mass and they're never going to be a core part of your military. Uh, they, they will be a support force rather than the main force. Uh, but the Tacoa Soldiers are extremely terrifying. They're only trainable starting in H4 from the Community Plaza, though, so... Uh, they are very limited in their in their capacity in that regard. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Lakota also has access to three uh, infantry units. The Clubman, which is basically just an H2 pike. Uh, they're not great pikes, but they do their job. Uh, they have very high siege. There's a reason the Club Rush is a thing. Uh, it's not what you're going to want to like base every strategy around, but they can definitely uh, throw your enemy off guard and potentially win you the game if the enemy is not uh, prepared or making skirmishers because they think you're going axe riders. Uh, the Seton Bow is a cheap archer unit that is really not very good. Uh, you want to avoid making Seton Bows if you can. Uh, you just have so many better units available to you in Age 2, like the Bow Rider and the Axe Rider, that you can pretty much just ignore seat and bows for the most part. Obviously, if somebody has like a whole bunch of heavy infantry in your base, uh, and you need and, and you need an archer, then yeah, make a seat and bowman. I'm not saying don't make them, but there's there's very little reason to want to make them. Uh, the last is the Wakino Rifle. Wakino Rifles don't really do a whole lot of damage, but they are quite tanky. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, they can build uh, TPs, and they have a decently high base HP. Uh, they're also dirt cheap, but they won't get you. They, they won't get very far in the damage department, especially because Lakota doesn't have access to any kind of counter infantry rifling. If I'm not mistaken, actually, I think they might. I think uh, the TPs uh, get a card that allows them to. Uh, to get arsenal upgrades. I'm not sure if that includes counter infantry rifling or not. If it does, that definitely helps out the Wakinas a lot. Uh, but Wakina rifles are generally low damage, high HP, just there to to be tanky and on the front lines and uh, stop stop a dragoon mess. You know, it's the basic job of the skirmisher, it, and it performs its job well. Uh, it's definitely a, a solid unit. Uh, it's not the best skirmisher out there by any means, but it does its job. Uh, the primary unit composition that you're going to find. Uh, in 90% of games from Lakota, you're going to encounter bow riders at some point. Uh, 
be it be it bow rider and axe rider in age two bow rider wife or bow rider rifle rider bow rider with keener rifle it really just is up to the lakota player what he wants to do at any given time and you might not encounter bow riders at all but you probably will because bow riders are uh, the, the the absolute majesty of the lakota uh, of the lakota military uh, as for things to watch out for, Lakota is a raid sieve. Uh, everything about them is suited for raiding. Uh, they have high quality units that don't get negative multipliers against villagers uh, that, they, that they don't need to build houses for. Uh, so you're going to be you're, you're gonna encounter a lot of raiding from Lakota. Uh, second thing is raiding. Uh, Lakota is a really good raid sieve. Uh, you want to watch out for raids. I don't think I've, I don't, I, I don't think I, I can mention that possibly enough. Uh, they do have the Tashunki Prowlers, which is not going to be a rare thing that you run into, but it is something that you should keep in the back of your head when you see Lakota get to age 3, because you never know. You know uh, especially, so, so make sure you look at your Lakota player's deck to see if he has any Tashunki cards, and know whether or not you need to throw a bunch of outposts up or keep your explorer near your army, uh, and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, lastly, is uh, another one is Treasure Stealing, the Lakota Explorer. Uh, is it doesn't have any kind of range attack capabilities and therefore isn't the strongest at fighting uh, treasure guardians. He will go down uh, it, it, against any sizable mass of treasure guardians. However, what the uh, war chief excels at is stealing treasures because he has an incredibly high movement speed and can scout the map very quickly and get to treasures that are being taken uh, to steal them right out from under you. So be very careful when you are taking treasures in age one when there is a Lakota player. You need to make sure that when you kill the last treasure guardian, your explorer is right next to the uh, it is right next to the treasure so you can snatch it up uh, without any delay. And lastly is the Rifle Riders switch. So Rifle Riders are an age three unit. However, Lakota has a card that turns all of their axe riders to rifle riders in age two. Now, this is a very scary card. Uh, if the Lakota player has invested lots of resources into making axe riders, and you make heavy infantry to counter, you are in the right to make heavy infantry to counter that, uh, assuming you're in H2 and probably don't have access to an H2 goon like most civs have. However, uh, you, need, you always need to be careful because if a Lakota player decides that he is going to uh, do the rifle rider swap, then suddenly your entire military, which just countered his, is now hard countered by the Rifle Riders, and you'll lose your whole military in an instant if you're not careful. It is uh, one of the things that my brother uh, likes to use a lot when it, uh, back when he played lots of Lakota. Uh, so that's pretty much just about it, ladies and gentlemen. Lakota overall is just a very annoying sieve to fight against. Uh, they're, they're a fun sieve to play and an annoying sieve to play against, because every time you get Lakota, you just think... Oh, fine, I'll be super careful with my villagers and herd extra well, and, 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 and go through all these extra hoops, and I can't do any of my fast fortress or industrial strategies in all likelihood. I need to, to make some H2 defense most of the time. Obviously, there's some exceptions, but uh, that, that's just about it. So thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day.